What's going on guys? Byron here at ETA Wheels. We're going to do a video that's a little bit different um, than some of the other videos. So I recently purchased a couple of the Audi flip keys uh, with the correct key and the correct transponder for my car. So I had to get them cut and to get them cut properly uh, with the machine that they had at the shop, I had to fully disassemble it as you can kind of see the parts here. Make sure not to lose that screw. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and walk you through everything you need to know about one of these remotes. Now this is the bottom half. It, I'm not going to fully assemble it right now, but it clicks in and clicks out very easy. And when you pop this cover off gently, just like that, this is where the battery is stored. And this is, you can see the circuit board here. Um, this particular seller was recommended by somebody in the group and uh, I'm very happy with them. I'm very happy with the quality of this key. Very nice key. Very good quality plastics overall. It is not at all what I expected. So it's actually a lot better than I expected. Now, this little guy right here is made out of glass. This is the transponder that sends the signal to the theft lock so that the car knows this key is supposed to be used with it. Now, on your standard GM key, like this one, it's somewhere here. But obviously you can't do that with this style of key. So what they've done is figure out how to program these to work with GM. So kudos to the seller for that. Anyway, there's a couple different ways you can take this apart for cutting it. The first one, if you happen to have a small punt, pin punch, you can, um, let me see if I can get that to focus a little better. You can pop that bad boy out right there. You can see a little better on this side. It's just a little roll pin. And if you pop that out, this key blank will separate from the uh, hinge piece. And then you don't have to disassemble it like this. Unfortunately, uh, I tried a variety of different methods and that thing is really in there. So, in the interest of expediency, I just went ahead and disassembled the key, which is very easy to do. So now, when you've got your key apart, you have to pry this off with a very small screwdriver, and then underneath it, you'll find, oops, you'll find a little screw hole, which is where this very tiny little Phillips screw is located. And as you take it apart, it's under spring tension. So you have to be careful and you have to just kind of unwind it until there's no more pressure on it. And then you can separate it safely without having to worry about stuff flying everywhere. Now this little spring, this is the part with the tab out. This is the bottom. And then this is gonna go on the top. So this goes into the button piece here. Probably can't see that, but trust me, it fits. Just pop it in like so, and it'll lock into position. And once it's locked into position, you have three keys on the side, and there's three holes here. So you just kinda pop it in there, and there you go. Now you're gonna take it and put this on. Now you have to figure out which way you need to load the spring so that it will pop open. And to do that, the easiest way to do it, very gently, take this piece, because you don't want to break that glass transponder, okay? So you're just gonna very carefully, very gently, you can see there's absolutely zero spring pressure on it right now, none. So you can either rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise to load the spring pressure. In this case, we're going to want to go this way, and you're just going to make one, and then you're going to come around a second time, two, just be careful, otherwise this thing will go flying across the room and you'll have to start all over again. So now, we're going to test it. Perfect. Hit the button, bam, key pops out. That's it. Now it's reassembled. 
and you're just going to find the little screw install said screw there we go that's it pop the remote which you can actually just use this by itself FYI not that anybody ever should because it won't stay together but it's a nice positive click and you're done verify function there you go uh, if you go a third rotation it'll spring out a lot faster but you don't want to shock that chip if you don't have to the way that it's set up now if you were to drop this a little bit it's going to be fine you're not going to have to worry about it but if you if you're one of those people that just for whatever reason wants a switchblade key that's going to go faster than that you can put a third little twist on it but i don't recommend it the last step you see most of the glue stayed with the emblem when I peeled it up. So it's just gonna gently kinda line that up as best you can and pop it in. That's it. Both keys are assembled. I've got them marked. This is key number two. This is key number one. And this is important because when you go down uh, with the Tech 2, which is, I'm gonna film next, you have to program the fobs <coughs> for the personalization settings. So fob one is driver one, fob two is driver two, and those two are gonna have personalization settings. And then the third fob, which is the original one that still works, I'm gonna program that as number three. And when you program it for the three, it's not going to have any of the personalization settings. You can do up to four uh, key fobs, but only one and two are going to have the personalization settings. So whatever order you want them, if you want this one as driver one, your original as number two, and then this is your backup as number three, you can do that. I'm going to program both of these as driver one and driver two, and then I'm gonna program the third one as key fob number three. You're also gonna need your original key so that we can program the transponder to the car. And I'm gonna show you how to do that too. So let's go ahead and go downstairs. See y'all in a couple minutes. Alrighty guys, so now we are going to try to see what we can see. That's a little better, put the windows down, let a little more light in. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to program both of these keys. So that the car knows that these keys are supposed to be here. So this is I can't even read that. That's key fob two. And that's key fob one. So the way you do that, you're just gonna start the car. And you're gonna shut it off. And you're gonna insert the next key and you're just going to wait until this lock icon over here goes off all right so now the lock icon is off and you can see it works just programmed it to the car now we're going to grab this one and we're going to program this key so you got 10 seconds from the time you shut the car off we're just going to shut it off, stab the next key in, put it in the run. We're waiting on the lock icon to go out. Lock icon has gone out. 
there you go that's it now the keys are programmed and you won't have any issues next step all right next step is critical this is key fob one this is fob two and this is going to end up as fob three So what you're going to do from this point, fire up your trusty handy dandy Tech 2, diagnostics, Cadillac, D, CTSV, we're going to come down to the body. This is going to take a second or two because I haven't done this in a while. What we're looking for is remote. Remote function actuation. Go into that. Special function. Program key fobs. You can program up to four. I'm going to program three. So the two new ones and then the third one. You go here. Ignition on. Engine off. And you're going to press lock and unlock. And we're just going to wait for the Osron to stop playing. So now we're going to click continue. So now whatever pro fob you program, it's going to be driver one. So you hold lock and unlock at the same time. That's it. So this is now officially key fob number one. Press continue. This is key fob number two. This is driver two. Lock it, unlock. Done. This is fob number three. Again, lock and unlock. done that's it guys now all your personalization settings and everything are now associated with the new keys and that's it for those wondering about the service stability uh, I have a brake pedal position switch and sometimes it gets a little funky anyway so now I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the car and you're gonna see it comes up with my driver one settings. There it is, Byron. Okay. Let's go ahead and shut that off. Let's pop this bad mama jamma in. Fire up the car. So now this is officially driver number one. Okay. Let me show you how this all works. Shut everything down. So now this is going to be set for driver number two. Just so you can see, this is driver number two settings. It says send nudes. You can see it starts the car perfectly, has no issues whatsoever. Everything is good. If you guys got any more questions feel free to send me a message and i'll answer them the best that i can this is byron have a nice night merry christmas happy new year all right guys so for those wondering about the range you can see my cars down there 
and it works. So if I push the unlock, you can see the headlights. I'm gonna lock it. So that's good enough for me. I mean, that's a good, I don't know, two stories down. So that's good enough for me. Later, y'all. Happy holidays.